Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for October 28th, 2017. There is a lot to talk about today. A pretty impactful storm system taking shape. Now we have Tropical Depression number 18 centered down here in the Northern Caribbean Sea about to cross Cuba with impacts into South Florida, the Keys, parts of Western Cuba here as outlined by the Tropical Storm Warnings in blue. And of course, over here in the northwest to central Bahamas. Now, this is not a major event like we saw with Irma. That goes without saying. However, it is a tropical system, a depression at the moment, forecast to become a tropical storm. And as such, there could be periods of tropical storm force winds, mainly in gusts, if there is any deep convection or heavy rain bands that develop and move across southeast Florida and the Keys. Otherwise, it'll be a big rain event, very wet across a good deal of the southern part of the peninsula. And I'm going to show you that in a moment on the radar. And then, of course, through the Bahamas and western Cuba, heavy rain squalls from time to time, and tropical storm conditions. That's the best way to describe it as this late season system, part of a very busy overall 2017 season, moves out of the Caribbean, and eventually well up off the southeast coast and then sort of aids in the development of a different storm, which we're going to discuss also in just a moment. So here is the satellite presentation uh, this afternoon, the black and white infrared, if you will, the whiter the colors, the brighter the whites, the higher the cloud tops. And while not the most impressive or well-developed looking tropical system, here is the depression here. And it's trying to develop some bands. It's uh, mainly a lot of clusters of storms. There is a little bit of an inner core developing down here. But again, it's fighting climatology. We are at the end of October. You can clearly see this frontal passage uh, taking place here with strong upper-level winds clearing Texas and Louisiana already. And the frontal system itself is encroaching upon the circulation, kind of pushing out everything ahead of it. But... In that little area right in here, there's enough anticyclonic flow or upper level winds that are not ripping this thing apart because it's moving with the flow that it is more than likely going to be a tropical storm. And the name, of course, will be Philippe. And it'll move across Cuba and then out into the southwestern Atlantic tonight. And then from there, some very interesting things are going to happen. Before we get into that, Let's sort of set the stage here. This is the frontal boundary itself, as indicated quite vividly on the radar, the high-resolution, very large radar map. And if we scroll down into Florida, we can see that, yeah, a good deal of the peninsula here, the southern part of it anyway, uh, covered in periodic rain showers. Nothing really heavy for the time being, just, you know, once in a while. Some of these uh, yellows and reds that show up and oranges, those can definitely dump some heavy rain in a short period of time. If we click on the radar sites specifically and we look at Miami, you know, you can bet there's probably some pretty heavy rainfall here in the western parts of Miami, in the greater Miami area, and then down towards the Keys, a few intermittent showers, heavier bands of showers or clusters offshore, and then some uh, rain showers over here in Collier and Lee counties. But Nothing with a lot of wind with it associated right now, which is good. But the rainfall can be enough to ruin your weekend plans. It can make travel very difficult. We know how Miami drivers can be. It's very fast and furious down there. So please be careful out there on the I-95 and the Turnpike. Uh, US-1 going down into the Keys. Take it easy, all right? This is this, These tropical downpours, you guys should know this down there. They are nothing to mess with. They can cause blinding rain for a couple of minutes at a time, if not longer. So just take it easy out there. Uh, so now if we look at the GFS, this is interesting. We're going to look at two different vantage points. First will be sort of the western Atlantic, and uh, we get a nice idea of uh, the coastline here. There's New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, the Carolina coast, and Florida. And then there's Cuba right there. So let's put this into motion. This is going to cover 48 hours, and this is the surface map and the previous six hours rainfall, I do believe. And you notice what happens here, and this loop will run several times. 
you see this is what would eventually become Philippe right there and it moves on up out of the picture at about 48 hours and as we start over here you notice it crosses Cuba a uh, period of very heavy rain in South Florida and it actually looks like maybe and let's just start back at the beginning here and I'm going to use the arrow keys to go through this frame by frame the low pressure center appears to cross according to the GFS the Florida Keys and make landfall in southeast Florida here. Let me get rid of my telestration and you can see that. In fact, let's zoom in and we can still move this around a little bit and watch what happens here. We go back a few frames and it's trying to move the scroll bar. So that's not going to work. But you see it goes across south Florida there. I mean, there's the L, 1,000 millibars or so, right there, the center of the low pressure area right over the Keys in southeast Florida. So maybe, just maybe, at least according to the GFS, uh, the 12Z, this makes landfall in southeast Florida. Uh, and then it goes on out into the Atlantic, and it gets a little bit of what we call baroclinic forcing, energy being injected to the system from the atmosphere, more so than from the ocean's latent heat that's above it, etc. And it gets a little bit of a boost, and seems to get stronger through different processes in this corridor through here uh, well off the southeast coast. That being said, you see what starts to happen there. It pinwheels in and if we go and look at a different perspective, this is the North American domain and you can see here it is crossing Florida tonight and then we can just track this up and then another low pressure area tries to develop up here and then everything gets pinwheeled in and a very powerful windy rainy potential for flash flooding and just low-lying area, poor drainage area flooding, you name it. And then a very strong wind maker over Quebec from there. So deep tropical connection from this system all the way down into the Caribbean. It rounds the corner. GFS kind of showing that this gets captured with this other low pressure area, pinwheels it in. Kind of reminds me of Sandy in terms of the overall mechanism, but not anywhere near as potent overall as Sandy was, and it's not coming from the ocean uh, on that big fetch. Remember, Sandy went out, and then it made that turn and came back in, something like that, not quite that dramatic. And that was five years ago, almost to the day. How about that for timing? Tomorrow will be the five-year anniversary of Sandy, and a similar setup with a system being captured out of the tropics pinwheeling in to New England. It's a good thing this was not a very intense hurricane on the onset. It goes without saying, we could have had bigger problems in Florida, Cuba, and elsewhere, and then we would have had a much bigger system to deal with for New England. As it stands, if you watch any of those NFL games that are going to be taking place up through here tomorrow, if you like watching football in bad weather, and, and who doesn't, right? <laughs> then... This is the Sunday football uh, day for you, all right? That's going to be really interesting uh, how some of these games get handled with the potential for 50 to 60 mile per hour wind and very, very heavy rainfall. Uh, and then the mo Monday morning commute in the Northeast, ugh, just stay home. Call in sick, whatever you have to do, but be careful because that Monday morning commute is going to stink in the I-95 corridor of the Northeast. Speaking of that, you know, look at all this. It's like a patchwork here. Cold Arctic air coming in, draining out of Canada, behind the frontal system, and then subtropical to tropical air getting tapped and pulled into the system up here for the Northeast. And then in the offshore waters, hurricane, tropical storm. I don't know if there's any hurricane force wind warnings up. Let's see uh, if it'll give me my slider. No, they're all tropical storm warnings. So no hurricane force wind warnings just yet, but it won't surprise me to see that go up, especially for the open coastal waters somewhere off the northeast coast up here. I bet we see these storm warnings, the purple color, I believe that's what those are, upgraded to uh, hurricane force wind warnings in the offshore waters. Uh, a very potent system for sure. Now just to give you an idea, and you can do this yourself, you can go to weather.gov, put in your city, your zip code, and then read the area forecast discussion. I'll show you where it is real quick. 
So if you put in, for example, Chatham, Chatham, Massachusetts, uh, you scroll down to the bottom of all the forecast stuff, and you look for this little guy right here, forecast discussion. You're going to want to click on that, and that takes you to this page. And on this page, you get all kinds of information. I mention this often during uh, hurricane season, which it is now, but during a hurricane landfall threat, and you just get a ton of information. A lot of it's very uh, detailed and meteorologically oriented, but if you can cipher through and figure out what all these different things mean, this tells you what to expect on a very technical level. And the bottom line, um, they, they address the impacts here. Interior flooding could be a big problem in some areas. Uh, the threat of very high wind in some areas. Um, and I'm probably scrolling through, yeah, strong to damaging wind. There's even the potential for some coastal flooding, but it doesn't, it seems like this is going to come in near low tide in most of the areas. There's the coastal flooding part right there. And, uh, and this is specific for the Boston National Weather Service County Warning Area. And they mentioned how Narragansett and Buzzards Bay Maybe some surge in there of one to three feet, but with this coming in on the low tide cycle, presumably it shouldn't be too bad. But I think the wind, that very, very strong to damaging wind, could surprise a lot of people. And so, as they say, Sunday night, strong southeast winds from about 11 p.m. Sunday night to 2 a.m. Monday morning, you could see some pretty strong winds, 30 to 40 miles per hour, up to 60 miles per hour, um, you know, 950 millibars up in the atmosphere, which is not that high up, one to 2,000 feet or so above the ground, depending on where you are. Um, and I really think what's going to come down to it, the more deep, heavy rainfall that you get, in other words, if you see it raining big time, you're probably going to get very strong winds translated down to the surface. So if you know how to read a radar, and you've got like radar scope or whatever, and you see like this kind of rainfall, very dark bands headed into your area up in the northeast, I think that's when you're going to see the strongest winds as well. So a lot to cover, a lot to keep track of, a big disruptive event for a lot of people, and I think people are going to remember this one, and if it gets a name which it should later on, the tropical system would be Philippe, like I mentioned. Um, it'll be sort of like, I said, sort of like this year's Sandy, but not nearly on the same magnitude, thank goodness. But it's going to hit a big population center. This overall storm system sort of combining the tropics with your mid-latitude storm system. And Sunday into Monday is going to be very interesting in the northeast, to say the least. So be mindful of that. Be ready for power outages and the potential for having to be stuck at home if trees are down and that kind of thing. I think it's coming. I'm very confident about it at this point. All right, so I'll have another update uh, on this tomorrow morning, and then it'll unfold after that. We'll know a lot more tomorrow as we are within the 24-hour window at that point, well within it, and we'll see how things shake out. Have a great rest of your Saturday afternoon. Enjoy it while you can, especially up there in the Northeast. I am Mark Suttoth for HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks for watching. I'll have more for you tomorrow.